What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hold on, I just ate an Oreo. I want to check my teeth. An Oreo. Oh, they're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I swear to God, there's, there's nothing that gets your mouth as discolored as either a hot Cheeto, an wine. Oreo, wine. wine. Wine's yeah, pretty yeah, yeah, good. Wine. Wine's pretty good. But I was, I was going to say a special edition Mountain Dew. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Those Cheerful. do the job. Oh, that checks out. Those that do checks. the job done. The USA <laughs> one recently came out. Liberty <laughs> Brew. Liberty Brew is the one. The blue one. It just gets Liberty. It, the, sorry, what? The, Liberty Brew. You never heard of this? Liberty, Liberty, no. Liberty, Liberty. Yeah, li Liberty Brew is essentially like their their current kind of patriotic Mountain Dew flavor. It's fantastic, Tim. Really, oh, really yeah. good stuff. Hmm. But it the gets all. It, it sounds like teeth. a beer. It does. It does. It should have been They're Liberty Dew, cool. right? But, Liberty Dew. That's, so, that's, so one of the older no, flavors. Should, used to be, Liberty Dew. Can I have a Liberty Dew? <laughs> Liberty Dew. No, Adam Sandler's the, doing the commercial. One of the older flavors was Dew SA. Um, that's Dew cool. SA. That's, that's way better. Great. Yeah. I don't know, Tim. I mean, they don't uh, talk to them about it, Tim. Okay. Who are the ad wizards behind this one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we also have the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Hey, guys. I just talked. You did. I appreciated it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> then we also have Blessing at Aoye Jr. It's me. Hi. Hi. How How's are you? Going? I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right, man. You know, chilling, hanging out. I, I'm, I'm digging your cyberpunk uh, jacket. Every time I see Blossom it, I'm like, man, yellow. I wish they sent me one of those. The one they did send me. Uh, actually, have I talked about this on the show? They sent me a sweater. I heard they, the story. They sent me a sweater. I'm going to pull it up. Oh, like the I played I'm it. Pulling it up. Thing? Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I why, love it, but I hate it. Why do you hate it? I want to know. I need he's gonna, to see he, this. Hold on, he's going to figure it out. He's going to get it. There he is. Look at I mean, he a wasn't rare blessings underside. He appearance. wasn't at E3, though. That's when you got it. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, here's you the thing I want to say. Master. Here's the thing I want to say is that I appreciate I appreciate gifts. You know, I. It doesn't I, I, sound like it. It doesn't sound like it. No, 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 it I doesn't sound like you appreciate gifts. It sounds like the exact opposite, actually. I appreciate video games PR. You guys do a great job. Y'all, y'all, y'all are out here killing it, and you know, y'all don't have to do this. Um, and I appreciate that you do. That said, this specific sweatshirt, I received it in the mail, and I was like, "Why?" All right. So, I don't know if you guys can see because I can't even see. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Cyberpunk. Played it. Played it before launch. Yeah. It looks like it'll pop off like after one wash. Yes, like there's that. It's the fact that like, why would I want to wear a shirt in public or a sweater in public that says Cyberpunk? I played it before launch. Like that is like the least like fashionable thing I could wear. It's on not my about chest, fashion. Right? It's about it's attracting the people you want to have sex with. All right? <laughs> they're gonna see that and they're gonna be like, "Hey, that didn't guy know, played Cyberpunk." Didn't know where that was going. I did mean, not I'm just put it out there. You know what I mean? Of like that. And I very specific. <laughs> Let me let me someone let me, that wants details, some hands on details. Of exactly. <laughs> Blessing. Let's just call a spade a spade right now. All right. If you're out there in your coat and tie, your hat down over your eyes, somebody's mm -hmm. going to walk over and be like, oh, man, you must play the piano. You must go to social events. You uh, what's your favorite opera? And you're going to be like, uh, none of those. But can I talk to you about Donkey Kong? And they'll be like, fuck <laughs> off. And they'll leave. This thing at least sets the ground rules. Exactly, all right. right. So oh, yeah. walking down the street. They see you over there with your mask on. You're buying another iced tea for some reason and they go oh my god that guy played cyberpunk ahead of release i understand that first word i'm gonna go talk to him because if they look at it they, <laughs> if they don't understand that word they're gonna say i don't want to i don't why would i go talk to this person what is a cyberpunk no yeah. definitely and like the only, the Thank only reason I, I i lead this conversation with i hated it is when they asked me for my my size i was thinking like oh here we go i'm gonna get tim's bomber jacket that is reversible that is the dopest thing of all time and in the mail i got it and i was like oh let's go and i opened it and it was this and i was like oh and it's like a size too big for me i am glad that greg gave us the whole you know description of where he was going with it because as he as the sentence was forming part of him didn't want to say it <laughs> <That's so laughs> true. i'm so glad he took us there and, it was he, a great and he committed to it he committed uh, it's just it. you know i i in my older age andy the one thing I've understood a little bit more is that I need to slow down. If I think about the words I'm going to say, it makes it sound more profound. Because if I just come out here and I'm like, wabba, wabba, ding dong, you know what I mean? That's my lifelong, that's what people remember me for, yeah. that idiot. But if I stop and I go, you know what, Andy, that does remind me of a great point. Wabba, 
dab a ding dong. People are like, Whoa. oh shit, this guy. The question is, Greg, move over, could Aristotle. You, <laughs> could you <laughs> say Liberty do slow enough to make it relevant and cool? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you might want to know what killed my client. <laughs> And the the, answer is no. <laughs> the gentlemen in the jury are gonna be the gentlemen of the jury do not want anything to do with you. <laughs> you look, no, I, I just like in my head, you pan the camera over, my client's dead at the table. Why what are you my client hired me before he died? That didn't make any sense. But you see what I mean? I talk too fast there. I'm back to being fast. You might say why. Well, I had a whole bunch of coffee today, and then I had this. This is a what? Korean little iced coffee thing, all right? It was made in Busan. You might remember that from Train to Busan, all right? Ah, I can feel it. Ah, I can feel the energy. energy. Well, anyways, ladies and Tim, gentlemen, Tim, this, I, oh, no, this is the kind of funny games, guys. What's up, Les? Let's do it. Well, Say no, it. I knew I knew you were about to transition <laughs> to one of the games. One of the games we've been playing, uh, and I was but gonna like how? do like a. a, a, a <laughs> I was, gonna, I was gonna do like a smooth little like interruption uh because i just remembered a game that i've been playing that i could oh. talk about the show. so i'm gonna let you do the rigmarole yeah, uh and let then me roll let you, me you rig. understand we're recording the show this isn't the pre-show anymore where we tell tim what we've been playing <laughs> well, yeah that's why that's why i wanted to interrupt because i didn't want to forget it but there There's you go breaking news breaking blessing breaking news. News. here's the thing this is the kind of funny <laughs> games cast each and every week right here youtube.com slash kind of funny games we come at you talk about video games all things that you love about them that we love about them we talk about that together if you want to get the show ad free you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like our patreon producers did muhammad muhammad julian the gluten-free gamer jeffrey long sancho west and james hastings with the addition of a new one skin tight salmon yep whoa <laughs> gotta Let's show go. some love to the skin Let's tight salmon. we don't even need to come up with a nickname for that one i've been waiting for them to join the kfcu we've been we heard the contract negotiations going on for years and finally it's here you guys mm -hmm. need to listen to PSI Love You XOXO. Skin Tight Salmon been rocking that for a month and a half. Oh, I was going to say skin. I was going to say skin free salmon. <laughs> I forgot the name. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to pay for this, I totally understand. Uh, you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or listen to it on your favorite podcast service. Just search for kind of funny games cast and we will be there. Today we're brought to you by Upstart, but I'll tell you all about that later. For now, bless. I want to know what you've been playing. I've been playing so much more Hyperscape on PC. Mm -hmm. I know I talked about it during our kind of funny first impressions, but it's it's now back in open beta. Hey, thanks uh, for the of, invite. Listen, all oh, right. I mean, I'm, nobody invites me anywhere. I'm an important person. A lot of people uh, reach out to me and they're like, hey, can you make some time? And I look at my calendar and I'm like, yes. No. Yes, I can find some time to make to play some Hyperscape with you. Uh, Greg, and so I really thought you are going to take my side on this. I really thought you were going to be like, that's <laughs> fucked up, bless, but he went immediately <laughs> against me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, so I've I've been playing quite a bit like on and off stream. I played. Uh, I was. I feel like I've been saying this every show, and I promise I'm not trying to like brag. But I was on. Uh. Uh. uh Effing around with Iffy and Fiona uh, as part of Rooster Teeth on Rooster TV. You know how I do. Uh, we played quite a bit of, of Hyperscape there. I actually played it with uh, Iffy and uh, Alfredo because Fiona was gone. And let me tell you, man, I feel like I've heard for years how great uh, Alfredo is at first person shooters. We didn't, we didn't win a match of Hyperscape. Like, really? Al Al Alfredo wasn't getting kills like that. Yeah. Hey, well, I told him. Oh, bitch. Achievement you gotta Hunter would ruin him. I said it. I said when he you left. Achievement understand. Hunter will ruin you. Alfredo is all about the tactical hide again. Let me look. Let me peek against this wall. Oh, is that? Is there a head there I can click? Let me click on the head. Let me walk two steps this way to my left. Is there a ladder down here? Maybe mm -hmm. I can zip line up. It's slow stuff. His brain has become so slow because he's yeah, playing these slow, he's methodical aging. games like Rainbow Six Siege, like Valorant. His brain, he's got to kick it up into high gear, dude, in order to play with hyperscape. Are you saying he game. should have some Busan ice coffee? Yeah. <laughs> you need to see the devil. Meet the no. devil. I'm with you no. now, Andy. I'm no. with you now. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's still good. I mean, he's obviously an incredible aimer. He he knows what he's doing. But bless, what's up? What's up with the invite, man? I've been I mean, waiting dude, for play. We I've been wanting play. an excuse to play Hyperscape because I every time console, I want to play, I have nobody that I want to join up with. It's coming to console August 11th, and I forget if they said whether it's crossplay or not. If it is crossplay, though, I'm gonna play it on PC because like I don't want to play on console against people with mouse and keyboard because that game is insane. Uh, but like. Playing it, you know, I'm I'm having I'm having fun with it. I it's I'm still in the I'm still in the the dating phase of hyperscape, and I want to know what Greg Miller is doing right now. But I want to know about the dating phase. This is fantastic. I'm I'm still feeling out, seeing how Hello. I'm gonna feel about it. Is this Alfredo Diaz from oh, Achievement no. Hunter? Uh, yes, sir. 
Uh, hey, th- is it? Yes. this is Greg Miller. You're live on the Kind of Funny Games cast. What's up, man? What's up, Greg? We just want to invite you to meet the devil. <laughs> meet the de- Oh, what am I talking about? I guess you'll have to tune into the next games cast to find out. <laughs> meet the devil. <laughs> oh, we got him. Oh, we got him. No, Good. we didn't do anything. <laughs> we didn't do anything. How much more are you going to crush that can? <laughs> oh, I wish I had another one in check right to my eye. <laughs> Greg, I've known you for a decade at this point. And like, man, sometimes I'm like, I know where he's going with this. And I'm often wrong. I don't yeah, think I've ever right. been this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would at least ask him about like, like make fun of him for being an old person that can't play yeah. games anymore. Or no, no, no. You just told him he was going to beat the devil. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. I like to keep everyone on it's their toes. Thing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Again, don't talk too quickly. This is a great podcast. Like Plus, one of the other, one of the other episodes we we opened up by talking about Vor. Like the God, kind of funny games cast is underrated. It had a I'm glow up this year. It had a glow up. Yeah, this year. And I wonder. One hundred percent. I wonder. Um, why. But yeah, I've been enjoying Hyperscape. Sick. That's it. <laughs> That's all Greg, I wanted to say. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Greg, you've been playing Animal Crossing. They had the new little the update recently. Yeah, right? I went to the fireworks last night. I put up some tweets about my fireworks too, because uh, wow. you because you can go. What was that, Andy? You want to talk some shit? I said, I said, wow. That's you cool. didn't say a fun wow though. You said it like you wanted. Wow. You were talking. Yeah, I see. You're doing the Owen Wilson wow. You gotta, you gotta give me some of that chain to Busan t- junk. You gotta give me some of that shit in order for me to go wow. It's one of those where I just don't think your body could handle it. You know what I mean? You remember when Hulk put on the gauntlet? That's kind of what this is. And I just don't think your body could do it. It'd be like putting on an Ant Man. You know what I mean? I thought, about Hulk, right Hulk. I thought about Hulk Hogan. <laughs> 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 no, 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 I very much mean, I mean, you know, the incredible Hulk. Um, yeah, no. It, it, so the other last week I popped into IGN, they were doing a charity stream. And uh, Brian Altano did a tour of my island. And I was very upfront, obviously, on the tour of like, hey, like, you know, I think at the time I was 165 or more hours, you know, switch tabulates how much you've played. And I was like, I know that everybody's dwarfed me, but this is that thing where, you know, I played so hard leading up to the review. And then after the review was playing really, really hard, I'd say for another month before whatever the next review was that took me away and kind of got me off track of checking in every day. And then for me, it's been the summer stuff just doesn't do it for me really like they added swimming and they added you know there's it's more summery activities and all that stuff i'm stoked especially right now number one i'm stoked because of living in san francisco where it's always one season which i love isn't as great but i miss fall and number two of course just the fact that you know we don't get the regular uh changes around here number two being uh halloween actually happening and so at the they announced this august update that had the fireworks every sunday a whole bunch of other little uh quality of life t- tweaks or whatever uh but at the end they teased you know and then you know coming after that though the hollow the fall update and they showed the pumpkin so it was that conversation with brian while we were touring the island of like i know that when the halloween stuff drops i'm gonna be all in because like right now you can go around tim and collect like summer seashells to make summer seashells kind of like you know props for your house or any of that kind of crap nobody cares give me the candy corn hats give me the jack lanterns give me the bats and spooky ghosts i can make for my island that's what i'm stoked about but just going around with brian got me got the wheels turning again of like yeah you know because especially because it started as like the quarantine game we i talked about all the time of like you know getting on there every morning having a routine to it and going through and actually like i don't know not i'm not getting out because that's not exactly what it was but you know during quarantine having something of comfort food and so i turned out that i missed that and i've been going back i'd say at least once a day right now popping in screwing around i start i, I started t- tearing apart one side of my island because one of the things i was doing when i was showing brian around was explaining of course like oh you see i have this giant orchard here back when the game started and you you know i was trying to make bells before the stock market really became a thing then the stock market became a thing and you know i got like a bajillion bells now i don't have to worry about that anymore so i started tearing up one side of my island making a campsite out of it and it's like now it's that idea of like I'm really deconstructing it and then having a blank slate starting to work with again. So this is a long way of saying uh, I'm just tinkering around in Animal Crossing and it's still the great Zen garden it always was. I thought last night yeah, it was my it, it was the first August fireworks event uh, on Sunday and it was really cool to get in there and again a game I know so well. I've already put another 10 hours in since I played with Brian. 
a game I know so well, those events are what you know you live for, where the status quo is shaken up. And so to get there last night and have Isabel out of uh, you know resident services out there talking to us, uh, go to over to Red. <laughs> I just I just picture I picture I picture like Isabel like out there. She's like the cops are arresting her, and she's like, oh, "Call my lawyer! Call my lawyer!" <laughs> uh, you know, I got a bunch of sparklers from Red. I got some balloons from Red. Some uh, party popper noises. But then just to watch the fireworks was another peaceful experience. And then let alone I didn't understand until I I put up my first round of tweets i went back to isabel was talking to her and you can put in your custom designs so i don't know if you saw the video i put up last night but it goes off and it's the kind of funny logo the kind of funny games logo antler logo jen you know all the stuff i've made for uh animal crossing so animal crossing continues to be just the fucking sweetest game yeah such a delight i'm really worried about my island greg i'm worried i know that if i ever go back in the year it's going to be chaos. There's going to be buildings on weeds, fire. Just weeds everywhere. That's what There's it was when be, I came back. It's going to be zombies somehow. Yeah, I'm really You should worried. do it on stream because it's actually funny when you do it because you come out of your house, your hair is all disheveled and like you're like, all like, you're like <laughs> and then you shake uh, your head and you go back to your normal look. But then you, I, I was walking around talking to people. And like, you look exactly the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, you've been gone for two months. <laughs> They're all using the nicknames I forgot. They're all like, hey, Bing Bong. I'm like, all right. I, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's enough. I want to talk about Avengers. We got to play the the beta last weekend, and uh, we pre-recorded a bit of our, our initial thoughts over our first couple hours of the experience. And we're going to tell you about those right now. Meet the devil. Avengers beta. Um, it, there's waves. So many waves to this this beta over the next couple weeks. Uh, if you are uh, pre-ordered on PlayStation, if you pre-ordered everywhere else, if you're just a normal person, or if you are press, we got to play it last weekend because we are press um, and we're going to be able to play it in the, the upcoming weekends as well. But we only got to play for two days, correct? Friday and Saturday. I think it I went live Thursday, Thursday morning. morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Saturday night it cut off. Yeah, exactly. Not a so, lot of time, sadly. Not, not, not too much time to, to get into it. But like we said during our uh, kind of impressions of the, the second war table stream that they did, quite a bit of content to get through. Totally. Um, especially for free, like I am, I'm pretty very like, like, uh, I'm impressed by this. Like they, they really went out and like gave us a lot to do a lot of very thing, very Asian and things to do and characters to play and kind of it gives you a really good taste of what this game is going to be. Andy, I want to start with you. What do you think about what this game is going to be? I'll say that I play the least out of anybody because I you totally coward. misunderstood how long I had to play. And so did I try to hop in Saturday night, like at, 2 a.m. or maybe it was Sunday morning. I forgot what day it was. It was servers are down. I was like, oh, that sucks. That's, why, why are servers down? Try to log in Sunday morning. Nope, servers are down. Like, uh oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I definitely <laughs> played the least. I wasn't able to hop into the war table or, or into the the harm harm rooms. rooms. I was unable to hop hop into the harm rooms. However, I will say that um, I think the game started off really uniquely and showing off all the different characters and their abilities and giving you small snippets of what gameplay uh, moments can be like with them. Um, I'd say Hulk is probably my least favorite. Um, and I would say that the boss fight against Taskmaster was pretty awesome as Black Widow. That was really fun. Uh, the combat feels like there's an impact, like every hit is meaningful. It, I was, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I was really worried it was going to be just flailing stuff and bot and you know attacks hidden everywhere and maybe you know is it hitting the enemy sure because i see like you know a uh, an effect Article happening effects. or whatever yeah but the fact that the enemies are reacting to certain hits and uh everything just felt like like uh yeah like it, it meant something every every hit had impact um i'd say miss marvel is by far my favorite to play but she's also again one of I guess if you remove the the intro where you get to play as all of them, uh, Miss Marvel is probably my my uh, the funnest part for me to play between that sort of back and forth between her and Hulk. Uh, I had a lot of performance issues on Hulk's sort of uh, little tirade yeah. through that little building where he's just knocking into <laughs> the gas canisters and there's particle effects everywhere, and I was dropping down to like maybe 15 frames per second. It was pretty rough. What are you um, playing on? PS4 Pro. Gotcha. PS4 Pro. Um, and a, a, yeah, mine got as loud as all of you all said that yours did. Uh, but then as soon as you move out from the Hulk uh, portion, I move directly back to Ms. Marvel. I I enjoy the voice acting. I feel like 
this campaign is definitely a little bit more meaty than I thought it would be. Just just from the small cutscenes we've seen, it doesn't feel like bullshit filler. It feels like, okay, all of this is sort of real and all of this feels canon. And I started getting less and less weirded out by the uh, by Troy Baker being Hulk, by Nolan North being uh, Iron Man. By like, I just felt like these started to feel like the Marvel video game versions of these characters as opposed to like, ah, who are these MCU wannabes? It started mm-hmm. to feel uh, more and more, um, I guess, real to me. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Wasn't I was pleasantly surprised by just uh, the combat and the unique sort of power-ups and seeing that battle pass build up. I know a lot of yeah. people don't love battle pass, but I I dug the hell out of it. I loved sort of uh, leveling up and getting more cosmetics from Ms. Marvel um, being on the uh, being on the ship with uh, Bruce Banner was really sick, and just kind of exploring and finding Easter eggs. I was really impressed, and I I cannot wait to play to to be able to play it again with all of y'all. Greg, yeah, uh, you know I think w- since we've seen this more and more and more, the hope has just been just don't fuck it up, just don't fuck it up, just don't fuck it up. Right? We don't need it to be a ten. We, I don't need it to be. I'm not expecting a nine even. Let's just have this be fun to play. After this weekend with it, uh, I didn't play any multiplayer. I just played a whole ton of single player stuff. Or, you know, I shouldn't say single player. I played a whole bunch of missions solo. Obviously, I had AI people with me or whatever, but timetables didn't line up for me to be able to play because, again, it was a weird window with all our regular constraints. All that aside, sorry. Uh, like, this game is going to dominate my life. Like, this is what I want out of this experience. This is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I feel mashed up with Destiny in the ways that. To Andy's point, like, you know, I think we need to at some point talk about everything that is in this, but at a base level here, right, of having your overall level, then having each one of the heroes that you can, you know, choose and free play through with uh, as you go. And for us, it was just the four people, right, of uh, Black Widow, Iron Man, Kamala, Hulk. Uh, Going in and them each having their own individual battle pass. Hold on, Porty the King needs to get down. The King! King. Each of them having their own individual battle pass to it where – each you figure there's daily and weeklies on each character, so there's actually a reason to flip around and you know go and play with your different characters. Uh, the cosmetics of leveling them up, I think the uh, fact that gameplay is fun. I agree with you, Andy. Hulk was my least favorite person to play with, right? Like I think Kamala. For me, uh, in terms of the characters that were available after you get to play the San Francisco Bridge section with all the Avengers for a quick second, uh, I think uh, Kamala was the most fun. I think uh, Iron Man right behind her. Uh, you know, playing as Iron Man and using the battle pass to unlock his like more classic-y like comic book suit and have that the rest of the way through. I was like, holy fuck. Like if that's the kind of, you know, cosmetics we're getting to build your team, I was all in for. And then and again, played- just real, real quick, just to clarify, yeah, I did not get to play as Thor or Iron Man, except for the beginning, just for the, yeah. for the listeners. Cause I, I say Kamala is my favorite because you get to play as uh Hulk and uh, Kamala Khan for the majority of the intro. And I, I chose to keep on playing as Kamala. Yeah, uh, the ability to unlock those things, the thing, you know, it's all these things we're talking about that they showed in the war table, but having it there and having a better understanding of it, of, uh, you know, from the beginning, uh, during the war table, we shouted out, who's going to be your main? Who's going to be this thing, right? And for me, really quickly, I honed in uh, on that bridge section and then throughout everything else we were playing, right? Uh, Captain America is my main. Then I think it's going to be Iron Man, Kamala, Thor, right? Those four right there. So then to think about the fact that those are now my four mains, when I go out and earn stuff with them, they reflect that. And when I'm playing either with you guys as one of them, great, that's fantastic. But when I'm playing by myself, as we saw in this demo, right? Like I put Iron Man in his classic suit. I could put Kamala in an Iron Man t-shirt. I started screwing around with all these little variations. And then to go out on missions with my team, my team in quotes, and have my team show up in the outfits I picked for them, even if I wasn't playing for them, that's when I was like, oh, I get this even more. Where we were talking about having your Avengers, your levels, these things as you go, watching them increase. Like, there's so much to talk about, and I don't want to dominate. I had a great time, and it's I'm all in. Bless. I was kind of underwhelmed by it. Uh, I was kind of let down. I feel like, depending on what we're talking about, it was the the demo or the beta, I should say, uh, was varying degrees of like, all right, this is competent, or all right, this leaves a lot more to de- desire, a lot more to desire, or all right, I kind of see where they're going with this. And so, like for example, combat. You know, like Andy mentions that like the combat felt like it had punch, right? Like, it felt like it had impact uh, with your moves. I found that I felt that way toward the beginning, but the more and more I played uh, the harm room and the in the war table missions, that stuff kind of started to boil down for me in a way where it's, like, it, the game started to get repetitive 
pretty quickly. Uh, and like, I didn't play that much of it. Like I, I played probably a total of maybe like four to five hours. And even there I was like, Ooh, I wonder where the variation is going is, is gonna to come in. Cause for a lot of the missions, it does kind of come down to, Hey, go over here, beat up some bad guys. All right, keep mm-hmm. going. All right, beat up more bad guys. All right, here, uh, go over here. And then like, uh, control this point while beating up more bad guys. And even in the ways in which you beat up the bad guys, to the game's credit, I think the control scheme for each of the characters makes a lot of sense. Like they 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 have it standardized in a way to where there's crossover in terms of the ways the different characters control. And so like every character kind of has an aim move, which is L2, right? And then you press R2, you kind of have like a shoot move, right? And so with, with Iron Man, you're aiming your blaster, shooting your ba- blasters. With Black Widow, you're aiming your gun, you're shooting your gun. With Kamala, they do it in a clever way where you're aiming like her fist and then you do like a throw with your fist where you're just pun- you're doing a long punch essentially. And that kind of translates to the rest of the control scheme where you do have your heavy triangle, your your light square, you do have your circle with which is your dodge. And I think all that stuff is clever. Uh, but in the actual combat and actual practice, and I, I did play um, with a couple of people at, during my time with the beta, uh, I found that it kind of became button mashy uh, at a certain point in, in, in ways where I'm like, ooh, how are they gonna how are they gonna make this better? Like how are they gonna improve on this? Because this feels like like, yeah, you can throw more content at me, but even the content that was there uh, uh, within the early hours didn't really feel that compelling to me. And I wonder if it's a thing where the beta is kind of missing some scenes. I'm sure there's going to be more context added because, like, with the with the structure of it, right? Like, you get that opening mission, you get uh, a follow-up mission with Hulk and Kamala, and then immediately they're like, all right, cool. We're adding in Iron Man to your team. We're adding in Black Widow. You're going you're gonna to get to use these characters and, and uh, experience how they like to play. I assume somewhere in that you're going to actually meet Iron Man in the story and some of the stuff was taken oh, yeah. out for the yeah, beta. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Even the beta had a screen that yeah. said that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It caught you up on where you were with that. And so like, I don't want to judge the, the story like harshly, um, but that said, I still, I'm still i still at the place where I'm like, all right, these guys do seem like uh, MCU knockoffs in some sort of way. Like, I think the voice acting is good, but like Hulk still looks like Bruce Banner from uh, he looks like Mark Ruffalo, right? Like Iron Man still for me is reminiscent of Iron Man from the MCU, but not like as good as Iron Man from the MCU. Uh, Kamala Khan is like the one that I think brings life to the cast. She and she is the she's the one here who's new. When we th- when we think about the Avengers, right? She's the one who is new, and she's also the one that is a kid, and I think lends this perspective of. Oh man, it's the Avengers. Oh man, I'm excited about this. Oh man, I'm going into the the Quinjet and like like I, I I'm a fan of what's going on here. I have my own my own um uh like fan art and like fan comics that I write. Like she's such a good character to have in this game. And I, if I can just interject, yeah, yeah, I think her character and her performance. Who's it's Sandra Said. It's S A A D. Sad Said. I'm not sure which. Uh, her mm-hmm. performance and Kamal in general is charming as fuck. Like I thought, yes. like. I was in love with everything that was happening with her. Yeah, Sorry, I, mean, so I like, do think she, she's she, key to the the experience being what it is and welcoming the, this new team of Avengers, even though it's the same team we already know. Yeah, and she, yeah. I mean, in this game, she's the one character who I'm like, I really like this character. The rest of the characters, I'm like, all right, cool. You guys, ha- you guys are, for me, MCU knockoffs. Um, but yeah, like aside from that, and again, it's a beta. There's. There was some performance issues I, I I saw. I think Hulk being the the big factor in that. When I was playing, I was playing with Simon Cardi of IGN. And he was playing as I think he was playing as Hulk, or maybe we just had Hulk on our team because it auto fills uh, your party. Uh, but we had we had Hulk on our team, and Hulk was doing Hulk super, and that caused everything to kind of slow down. <laughs> and you know, moments like that made me go like, uh, the gear system. It's kind of reminiscent to Destiny's where you have different types of gear that you can equip that that will level up your character. And there's like a there's there is your actual character level and there's like a power level that is reminiscent of power in Destiny, which is I think a really good idea and in practice really cool. But the gear in Avengers doesn't seem to show up on your characters. Like you have cosmetics that are separate from actual equipable gear. Like you have like hundred percent, yeah. You like when yeah. you when you when you go into your gear and gauntlets, that doesn't affect that doesn't pop on your character. It do, yeah, it doesn't affect how your character looks. Which I'm like, all right, I like I don't like that. I don't I don't think that's a good <laughs> idea. I I hope I I don't know. That doesn't seem like something that they'll change for the final game. Oh, which no, kind of no, no. makes me worry. Um, I think that's a good like thing that. though, right? Because like not tying the gear to the different abilities that you want, so that way you can actually like 
still get as powerful and like play the way you want, but look the way you want as well. Mm -hmm. I think especially in a Marvel game, like that means so much because I loved Insomniac Spider-Man allowing you to, you know, once you unlock the suit, there's an ability tied to that suit, but that that just unlocks the ability with any suit going forward. Like that's the type of, I, I feel like get, having that type of variation, like really is... I feel well, that's always like the double edged sword with this, right? Yeah. Is that you want like the cosmetics and it, right? I mean, I'm taking immediately back, Jesus Christ, to, uh, to 2012, 2013 to Marvel Heroes when Marvel Heroes was dropping and I was so excited for it and I was playing it. And I'm like, wait, it's a Diablo, but with Marvel. Yeah. What happens when I equip, better, you know, the chest piece? Oh, you're more powerful. Do I still look like, you know, black suit Spider Man? Yeah. I'm like, all right, that's weird, and I think at this point it's just gotten used to it. For me, I understand yeah. what I, I know. I know Destiny. I think Destiny changed that because a lot of the community didn't like that. Oh, damn, I, I'm pretty well, sure it was Destiny. I know the community will come out of you, but I think they changed that because yes, they would unlock new things or they would find new loot, and it was ugly. And they're like, "Fuck, this is really really good, but it's ugly. I don't want it." Um, and I think that they found like, a work that's, tra for that. that's transmog, right? Like, I mean, it's the same thing we saw yeah. in Odyssey. Yeah. They did a patch afterwards, right? Where like, all right, all right, you like your style, but you want the stats of this ugly piece. Go ahead. But I feel like you can you can have the best of both worlds, and I think they 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 do it partly because they have the cosmetics, and so you can you can have 100%. specific costumes for different characters, and that's why they do it. But it's like, man, if I'm unlocking what you're calling gear, right, and I'm having different parts for for uh, or like different types of gears for different parts of my character being able to equip that and unequip it and like let's say have and this is this is me who played destiny speaking and i really like the person who or really like the uh the time i had with destiny right like if i could equip like certain uh like a certain arm to iron man and then color that the color that i want like dye that the color that i want and have that mm -hmm. equipped with certain legs that i want right i feel like that'd be such a cool thing and it's kind of a, it, for me it's such a missed opportunity to not have that here and to have gear be a thing that you don't see at all uh, which really takes me out of uh, out of that specific experience, um, but overall, that. like I, I think I I think this game is going to be fine with the when it comes out. I think it might have an uphill battle with some things um, with the things I just mentioned, but yeah, I thought it was fine. Tim, what yeah, did you think? I, I, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm definitely like it, uh, it's an amalgamation of all of what you guys are saying in different ways. I am extremely impressed with how much I actually enjoy this game. Like everything going into this, I've hated on and I, I've had so many issues with. And I think that they've solved so many of those issues, but they haven't solved all of them. But sure. some of them they didn't solve, but it's just like an understanding of like, okay, this is this instead of that. And I just need to be okay with that and, and like look at it and judge it for what that is. And I don't think it always hits that mark. Uh, talking about what you're saying, bless of the button mashy stuff. I agree with that, but I agree with that tied with what Andy's saying of it feels good. Like yeah. hitting, making impacts on uh, enemies feels good to me. So it makes the button mashy stuff kind of feel consequential in a way that I enjoy. And I feel like the rewards that I'm getting from it, uh, whether it's a cutscene moving the story forward or even just like lip the Easter eggy stuff of character names popping up of some of the missions you're doing. Uh, I, I didn't do too many of the War Table stuff after the, the main campaign that we got to do. But one of the ones I did was focused on Hulk, who unlike you guys, was my favorite character oh, to nice. play of, of the actual four uh, demo characters. Um, in the, the the main lead-up bit where we did the campaign, I hated Iron Man so much when we are flying across the bridge. I was like, yeah. this sucks. This is not what I want Iron Man to feel like. Playing Iron Man in the harm missions later, I was like, I really like this. When you get the chance yeah. to play as Iron Man, yep. I feel like the, the demo of Iron Man, or demo's not the right word, that opening Golden Gate Bridge thing. A taste. It's it's a taste in the wrong way. Where no, it's like, I agree. Like, that is, that is a, a, just half of a character that's the least fun half well, of it. My, my thing around. is that whole, and I'm going to sound super negative on this game the whole time. I apologize for that. But Blessing, I, never apologize for that. Speak your truths, Bless. No ham. You hate it. You hate Marvel. I, you love <laughs> DC. I respect it. I, can, I, mean, I can't agree I like with it. way more than <laughs> DC. God damn it. Uh, I think the tutorial is ter terrible. Like the way they the way they go about it is, yeah, it is that original mission, and you're hopping from character to character. And I think theoretically, it's cool and to to convey what's going on in the story and convey what's going on in the situation. I think that works. But as a gameplay tutorial, all the characters control differently enough to where basically it's prompt after prompt of like, okay, cool, I'm Thor. Do this as Thor. Uh, you can press L two to, to to hold up your your hammer. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. All right. Now, quickly transition to, to Iron Man. All right. This is how you play Iron Man, and you're like, okay, cool. And then you like you get five minutes of Iron Man, and you're like, all right, cool. Now I'm Captain America. Now I'm this, and I'm just like, oh wait. All right. So what what's the control scheme here? And 
I mentioned earlier that the, the controls are kind of standardized between characters. You get none of that during the tutorial. Like during the tutorial, yeah. it really does feel like you're playing different characters and they're throwing so much at you. And by the time I finished it and by, by the time I got to the next mission, I was like, I don't know how to play this game. Absolutely. I, I do agree with that. I, I will say that with the Golden Gate Bridge scene that we've now seen a ton of times because of our the nature of our jobs, um, I was way more thrilled playing it than I ever expected to be because of the impact. Because when you first start playing as Thor, the big criticism I've had of this game is it the, the control interface looks like a mobile game. Where I was like, oh, great. It's only going to be one of these three buttons you're hitting and it is just kind of spamming these attacks. And it doesn't feel like that actually playing it. And that is probably the biggest uh, compliment I can give my experience with this game so far is that the combat feels consequential and it feels like you are in control of stuff like a modern video game. It doesn't ever feel like God of War. doesn't ever feel like Insomniac Spider-Man. But it does feel uh, way better than a mobile game. So it's like I need to... St that that uh, issue that I had, totally out the window. And that's great. But I do think that in terms of movement, momentum, and where you're aiming, it doesn't feel good at all. <laughs> like, no matter what I'm doing, whether like, I feel like the best is shooting. Like, when you're like Black Widow and you're aiming and shooting, that kind of feels like you have control. Otherwise, it does just feel like you're kind of wailing around hoping you hit the thing you're trying to hit, uh, especially when there's a ton of enemies around you. The lock-on system, unless I'm just like totally doing something wrong, it just feels like I'm never able to lock on to the enemy that I'm trying to get to. I'll lock on to someone. I'm like, okay, I can just get to you because it really doesn't matter. There's not much strategy of who to go to first because it, at the end of the day, is pretty button mashing at this early level. But I was having fun doing it. Like, it's this weird thing where, like Greg was saying, it's not a nine, it's definitely not a 10. I don't even know if it's a seven, but like, I'm enjoying it in, in a way that I definitely did not expect because I think that they do a good job with all the surrounding stuff and the Easter eggs and rewarding me enough package. with, with yeah, and it's all package. And I, I do really dig this take on the Avengers so far um, because I, I want to know what's happening in the story. Is there going to be too much fluff in between all that story stuff to keep me motivated? Probably. Um, but I can't believe I actually am excited to play this game now. And that's when, when, something I didn't when, expect. When you say fluff, what do you mean? Like you mean like just like here to go to a war zone, go do a drop zone kind of thing? If if it's like, hey, you need in order to get to to find Tony Stark, like after this uh, the campaign bit, in order to get yep. to him, if we have to do ten war zone missions that gotcha. feel okay, so similar, like yeah, at, at that point it's going to kind of be a problem. Another thing is. I need to get over this. Like I said earlier, this isn't the game that I want it to be, quote unquote. It's the game that it is. But man, playing it makes me wish it was the game I wanted it to be. Like, I do wish that this was a more traditional Shadow of Tomb Raider style narrative mm -hmm. experience. And uh, even when I'm playing through, I was doing some of the, the later War Mission stuff after I did the harm challenges. And that was when I finally fell in love with Iron Man and the, the harm thing. I'm like, oh shit, okay, cool. Iron Man's actually really dope when you don't need to fly around and have really shitty Star Fox style controls. Um, I'm playing as these characters and I'm like, I'm enjoying you guys a lot. And we're out on these missions and we have a team. This is cool. I want to be able to switch between these characters on the fly like in Final Fantasy Oh my 7, God, really. yeah. And it's like, if this were a 20-hour narrative experience game, that's what this game would be and that would be fucking awesome. Um, but again, I didn't play with you guys. Maybe that would change this. Maybe it'd make it more fun for me. But I'm, I'm, in a, I'm torn on this. But at the end of the day, I really like it. This episode of Kind of Funny Games Cast is brought to you by Upstart. During these economically turbulent times, everyone's looking for a way to feel more financially secure. So if you're still needlessly throwing money every month at high interest credit card debt, it's time you checked out Upstart, the revolutionary online lending platform that knows that you are more than just your credit score. Uh, now's the time to find out how low your Upstart rate can be to help pay off high interest credit card debt. Unlike other lenders, Upstart can reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. You don't need a degree or or diploma to apply though. It's that simple. Uh, one of my best friends had some real bad credit issues going on the last couple of years. He used Upstart. It helped him consolidate everything and just made everything a lot simpler and easy or for him to handle and kind of just wrap his, his mind around. Uh, and he's a much better place now. Upstart makes it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate. Since it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens only if you accept the rate and proceed with your application. And uh, the best part is if the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. Uh, free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt and get back to using your money your way. 
with Upstart. See why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash kind of funny to find out how low your Upstart rate can be. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash kind of funny. Your loan amount will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Not all applicants will qualify for the full amount. Hurry to upstart.com slash kind of funny. Yeah, that, yeah I, I think I think you see glimpses of what it could be. I think that's what breaks your heart the most is where y- you do see these really cool moments of cutscene interactions between characters that you're actually kind of starting to dig and start to feel their vibe or whatever. And I, I had the same thought of like, man, what if this was just a really good, deep narrative single player experience? Um, but I mean, I am also the type of guy that loves loot and I like yeah. finding new items and I love upgrading my characters. Um, during that intro scene, I I felt a sort of immediate regret where during the war table, I called Shotgun on Iron Man, and I hated the way he controlled in that <laughs> intro sequence. I, it, it felt really muddy and not intuitive. It felt really bad to play as him. Um, but I'm hoping I maybe I do. You know, I, Tim, you sort of turn around him with the harm mission. So when I, you get him on I the did, ground, when he's okay, like, yeah, yeah, when, he's, yeah, like when you have full melee control combat. over him and you get choices, yeah. As totally far as, as as far as shooting though, I didn't have any issues with that. I thought that felt really good to me. I didn't have any issues with like, you know, left trigger to right or L two to R two sort of aiming and doing stuff. Um, what, what really got me excited was Black Widow's gameplay against Taskmaster because that felt so awesome and you felt like a badass. Like d- doing the doing the uh, um, the. I guess the dodge roll into like you have to time it correctly to do a sort of parry move or whatever. And then getting him on the ground, a couple of of uh, you know melee hits, dodge back. The sh- the guns sound incredible. Her gameplay felt really fun as hell. Uh, I would say she's probably going to be like maybe my second uh, behind Kamala, just because Kamala felt great. But I hope I fell. I hope I fall in love with Iron Man because. He's my dude, but it did not feel fun. <laughs> yeah, playing as Kamala, I I really want a Kamala game. Like I want to miss Marvel, like actual standard game akin to Spider Marvel Spider Man, uh, because like that that I think that is the uh, one of the places where this game succeeds is it is close enough to that type of game. Like it is close enough to a triple A, uh, big budget, like behind the back, uh, like actual action game that is still leaning enough toward the destiny stuff to not be to not be as good as one of those in, in terms of like how the characters control and play uh, sure. but you have hints of that and so like playing as kamala and being able to uh press press x to jump but then get close to a ledge to where if you press x again you can swing off it or grab onto it and then pull yourself up like that's such there's, a that was such a cool mechanic such a cool move yeah there's such a great weightlessness with her in, yeah. in her traversal when you are running and jumping from platform to platform and there's sort of this a lot of it has to do with how the camera moves, but when you feel that speed sort of sort of start to build up, and she jumps, and there's this that that stretchiness is definitely there, and it, yeah. you well, you know it it just feels well, awesome. It feels great to play. She, she has the great thing where where you're when you're sprinting and you press X to jump, her uh, her leg will essentially like enlarge, launching her right and giving yeah. her that superpower jump, which is a really great feeling thing. On the other hand, I played a lot of Black Widow, and Black Widow for some reason also jumps very high, and I'm, that's one of those things where I'm like, all right, I She's understand why. Jackson. I understand why everybody else here is able to fly and jump high and do the things that they're doing. Black Widow, you're a human being. How are you jumping this high? She doesn't make She's sense. Russian. She's Russian. Got, they uh, got I mean, crazy legs, yeah. Bless, bless, you said something that I, I really agree with, which is that it is close enough to one of those games. And, like, obviously, <laughs> I want more from that. Close enough and good enough shouldn't be good enough in, in this day and age, especially for the Avengers property. Uh, but even just looking at this as a single player experience so far, I want to keep playing and I'm interested in the gameplay and story of how it's all p- being presented. And I, I think the War Table stuff is fun enough. Like I just said that I don't want to have to do 10 missions in a row to get to to move on because that would feel like fluff. But even the missions that I did do, I was like, I'm liking these. And they're, there's enough fun like side content that they're adding that is building the world that I was like, all right, it doesn't all feel like the harm missions, which are obviously just, hey, here's some battle scenarios, you know, uh, yeah, the, the war table room. stuff <laughs> and the, the the drops or whatever that, that we got to do. It's like, okay, cool. There's this aim base and the aim base, at least so far, didn't just feel like aim base number one of a thousand and two. It was like, this seems like it has a bit more story to it. And we'll see where that goes throughout the game. But at least in the five hours or whatever, four hours I played at this game, I'm like, 
man, there, there's there's care being put into making sure that they are building a Marvel world that they can continue to build on. And I think that that's yeah. key where I'm kind of sold enough on the single player stuff that I knew, I, or at least the type of game that I'd like. And so liking this, I'm like, cool, you guys at least did good enough there. But I don't like the Destiny type stuff, like the grindy shit, the loot and all that. And, I, and with this, I'm like, you put it in a wrapper that's pretty enough for me to be like, I'm kind of enticed and interested in this. And, you know, the idea of playing with you guys, playing with my other friends, playing just by myself, like popping in every once in a while to make sure that I'm getting the shit that I need. I'm like, I don't hate it. That's the big question I think about it right now is that where we all are. I, you know, walked away from this game wanting to see the final product of the story. And I think it is such an interesting place of, all right, cool. You play through all the story stuff, single player, right? And then all the optional stuff, you can play multiplayer with your friends. That way you can talk over it and fuck around and not worry about it. So for you, Tim, I'm wondering if Golden Path is going to be that you can just go, boom. I mean, I'm sure there'll be at least one point to introduce all this. Yeah. Go to a war zone or whatever. But after, after that, it is just a like boom, 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 and you can go. And then if the iconic missions are enough to pull you. Because I was surprised. I, I really, I, I'm doing all the war zones and the harm stuff. And then the Hulk's iconic in there, right? Which yeah. is just like a jump in. This is a Hulk story. You have to play as a Hulk thing. To jump in there and have it be, and granted, as you all know, like I'm a, I'm a DC Comics fan, MCU fan. Uh, and so like, Spider-Man comics I know a lot about, but outside of that, it gets wishy-washy. You hate Marvel. Yeah. Hate them. Uh, being on the the jet, the Quinjet as Hulk on the way to the iconic mission and, and having, I think it was Kamala be like, oh yeah, Bruce left this message for you. And having... Troy's Bruce talked to Hulk to set up the mission of what we're doing and him apologize for having to do this. And, it, you know, I, uh, story uh, tidbit breadcrumb, I guess, of like, I thought, was it Monica or Vanessa? If, if you see her, ignore her. And then she's on the loudspeakers yelling at us. Like, there's clearly a history there. Like, it's yep. like, oh, this is a side mission that will unlock the iconic skin or whatever for him. But it also is interesting story content that's tied back to, yeah, to everybody's point. It is for me, you know, this step up in terms of graphic fidelity of ultimate alliance where it is just smash the shit out of everyone in this room go to the next room and smash the shit and i'm not i, mean, I don't even mean it's just a hulk thing i mean is an everybody thing but like if they're gonna layer in that kind of stuff with it and like again then like we were talking about the easter eggs and kamala story of getting to have kamala there and have her freak out to be an avenger and meet people have her freak out to be on the chimera and explore and like nerd out about uh cap shield and stuff like that's all awesome i yeah. I, I think it um I think we all sort of jumped to conclusions and just assumed this would be some phoned-in experience and some, like, uh, to me, <clears throat> Tim, you saying that you don't even think this is a 7, like, I I think this will hit, like, 7.8, maybe 8 uh, at the highest, but I think 7.5 around there will be kind of the metacritical hit. I think we, I think it's easy for us to assume that that's what this experience would be, with that it would be a really phone and experience. How can you make Marvel have a meaningful experience when it is tied to such like, you know, pay to win stuff and, and loot boxes and, and, you know, just, the, just the overall vibe that destiny and looter shooters kind of give you. Right. And, but getting in there, you can tell that the devs are like, we just want you all to play this shit because it's, yeah. it really is more than that. And getting in there and, and experiencing these cutscenes that, again, don't feel phoned in. And none of this feels like a it. It just doesn't feel like a cash grab. And I, I like. I think that's. It was probably unfair for me to even think that. But I just think that when we want a Marvel story, we want it to be sort of this tight, concise eight to ten hour campaign, and not a Destiny style game with Avengers. Why would they do this? How dare you? This isn't what we want. And uh, I, I'm glad that my. In the little that I've played, my expectations um, were totally reversed. Like I, I, like my thoughts on this whole experience were totally reversed on what I thought it would be. If I can toss yeah. in there too, I mean, we've talked about the story and stuff. I do want to in your, but Andy, you're bringing it back. Though, like this is clearly a game they want you just to go play and have fun with. I want to give them credit for uh, quality of life stuff. Where I thought I jotted down notes, right? I think it's awesome that you can edit your gear on a loading screen. How many fucking games do we play where the loading screen is just a stupid tip? But this one, you can actually go into your character inventory, move stuff around, do this. This is where you can spend the nanites to upgrade stuff because you have stuff that's a level. But then if you if it's a certain rarity, you can go in and apply your nanites to get it up to its max level. On top of that, like when it's over, you don't have to go all the way back to the Chimera war table. You can select your next mission there. And I know yeah. that you're like, oh, well, this is like 
easy sh- anthem fucked all this up like i've seen plenty of games fuck all this mm-hmm. up and like that they don't have the stuff that should be simple of to get you right back to playing more i thought like even being in the world and using i forget what they call it but like you know your detective vision to scan for objectives for it every time i did that right it was very much like there's the main mission you're going for but there's a chest over here there's one of these things where you have to figure out all the door triggers to open that door to get into the vault to get the better piece of loot to get the better piece of gear even the the one of the Hulk missions, right? Or maybe I was just playing as Hulk, but running around where I passed a door that was locked and then it turned out that there were all these uh, things on the wall to smash in that were timed. So I had to find them all, then hit them all, and then run back to hit them all in time before oh. they all reset to get back into the vault to get all the gear, to get all the loot, to get all the nanites. I was like, again, I, I it's going to be... I'm, what my question is, and this is more just as a, I don't know, fan of video games, is if it's going to be... Yep, all that shit's there for when Greg wants to nerd out and when Tim just wants to get the fucking eight to ten hour story or whatever, he can just get that and not have to do any of that. He can mainline it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Speaking of quality life stuff, I can't believe like how bad the opening boxes feels in this. It's It reminds me of Final Fantasy 15 where it's just like, God, I need to be exactly lined up with this to hold the oh, square oh. button for it to open. Gotcha. It's like... We need to just move on from that, guys. Like it doesn't work. Put like, a giant radio, a radio down, right? The whole square yeah. anywhere. Either either just make it a giant thing or just make it that I just need to stand next to it and it auto comes to me, or stand <laughs> next to it and like a time thing for it to come to me. I don't need I don't know. I, yeah, Tim, I kept doing my Kamala Khan hold square uh, ability. Because my yeah. whole square ability with Kamala Khan, I think it was like this crazy cool like uppercut or something like that, which is something that again, oh, oh um, Upgrade trees. Well, we can get to talk about upgrade trees because I I did have some fun with that. Um, finding new and cool abilities. But yeah, whenever I would go to a loot chest on the ground, uh, and you have to hold square, I would always hold square, and Kamala Khan would do an ability because I would never be sort of lined up right. with it. Yeah, in the right uh, position. The, the Hulk opens it up really funny though. He just kind of like kicks it open. It's really yeah. silly. Um, okay. yeah, I, I like the upgrade trees. I like seeing where that could go. I like seeing. Yeah, we only um, got one of them, right? One of three. I thought there was mm-hmm. cool moves in there. In the, to your point of like varying the combat, right? I think you might be yeah. looking at the idea of like that's where I found the variance where it was I was going through and drilling in and suddenly being like, okay, square, 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 triangle here will do this. And that's what I'm going to try to yeah. do. I'm always, I'm always the type of player that whenever I have the choice to focus one enemy or affect a lot of enemies at a lesser impact, I love doing a lot of enemies. And just seeing that and seeing uh, that's, I'd say one of the few things I enjoyed about the Hulk's playthrough was, you know, I, I would upgrade the the next ability and I could do a ground pound and it could be this sort of ground pound that affects this or it could have a, a much higher radius and affect more and add more stun. And it shows you, uh, one thing I really enjoyed about it was it shows you, I think like damage, stun, knockback, and it had all these sort of variables and it would say, this is a high stun with a low damage. Or this is a high damage with a low stun, and it would show you kind of uh, how it affected the enemies. And I, I love shit like that. Like when you get into the nitty gritty, <laughs> I become Fran Mirabelle the third, dude. I'm all in there. I, I, I like that shit when it when it matters. When I feel like it is really impacting the way that I'm playing. Which to to kind of bring it back, right? Like I I am a person who have been I've been looking forward to this game as a Destiny like experience like as this multiplayer experience where it's a live game and you're doing all these different missions with friends and you're using your different abilities to to complement each other um and I think with that to talk about the war tables like I'm curious to see how how much variance there is and how much it feels like what I'm doing actually matters in terms of how I'm upgrading my character, how sure. the different ways I make my character, right? Like the different moves I equip to my character. Cause I assume this is another thing that I don't know if they, I'm sure they said this during the actual war table stream, um, but I might've missed it. Like I assume you can switch out your special abilities for the different characters because it seemed, it seemed like that was an option that was just like locked in the actual game. I don't know if you guys got the impression or not. Um, you mean like, but, so like, you mean like uh, the ultimate, like the Hulk buster for Iron Man? Like, like the, the like the L1, like the like L1 that, R1. or like the L1 R1 abilities, yeah. Okay, how would I, that I don't know for sure, but yeah, I don't know. Oh well, I don't. I, I didn't get that impression at all because they really? felt pretty. They felt pretty character specific, like. No, no, I think he means though, like, like I yeah, we start with Hulkbuster, but we'll get another ultimate for Iron Man. Like now that yeah. we're gonna switch oh. with Kamala, but we're gonna get like multiple for that. Absolutely. So we yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I mean. Like you'll unlock Not new ones or, because definitely. I because I remember pulling up the menu, there was a specific screen that was like, all right, yeah, here's the screen for this move, and it seemed like there was spaces for other ones. Um but I could be making assumptions. That said, with the different ways you can customize your character and in different ways you can uh you know go through the skill trees and all this different stuff, like 
I really hope that stuff matters because for me, there was no point in the beta where I was like, oh man, it'd be really nice if I had this other move. Like a lot of it felt kind of samey to me in, in that regard. And I hope, like, I, I hope there's more variance there because I want, I, sure. I want it to be reminiscent of something like Destiny. Like going into the War Table missions also, like Greg, you mentioned that, you know, you press up, up on the D-pad, which does the scan and you see your main mission and then you see two other question marks and you can kind of pick and choose like how you want to go. I hope every mission isn't that because I kind of got the impression that that could kind of be copy and paste in a lot of ways of, all right, yeah, like this mission, I have two side objectives I can do, but I have this main one over here. All right, next one, cool. Some more side objectives, but also my sure. main one. I hope you're not going through the same thing over and over again. What will get interesting, I, I think, to what you're talking about in terms of, oh, you're you know going through the skill tree or you're making a gamma build, right? Like I know we've talked about this before that like, you know, the piece you're putting on different pieces of PIM tech or Stark tech or whatever, and they have different attributes. And so you can build out a cool build. It's giving off gamma radiation damage, right? Or protecting you from shock. Like you're talking about all this stuff mattering. What I found interesting, again, and as I get obsessive and think about like how much hopefully I want to play this when it's all out, it was the different difficulties. And so it's going to be one of those as you go up in difficulty, like there already are mission modifiers on these missions, but as I go up in difficulty, is it going to be that people are giving out you know, 40% more electric electric damage. So I need to have a build in my armory that is, you know, set up to give me the buff against electrical damage. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I think, I wonder if that's where more of that'll be. Yeah, I, I think, I think the modifier stuff, uh, to Blessing's point, I think it, I think it matters if you care about certain play styles. I don't know mm -hmm. how much it'll affect the, the story or fighting against different enemies. I think it just comes down to what sort of player do you like or what sort of play style do you enjoy? Like, do you enjoy kind of being back and affecting large groups of enemies, uh, which I do. I love, I love when I'm in a party knowing that, okay, I'm, I'm with Greg and he's got this ability. I'm with bless. He's got this ability, Tim, maybe you're there. I don't know if you're there, Tim. I don't know if you're in this party with us, theoretically. Maybe I'd love for you. Maybe. You're invited, probably. though. You're invited. I wanna, though, I, I'll show up for at least at least one one of these. You're Hopefully invited. Too. Have, Tim. You're, you're definitely invited. I just love knowing that I'm I'm helping out the squad, knowing that all right, there's six people here, and all of them could potentially fuck us up. But if I hit this ground pound at a, the perfect angle, yeah. it's going to knock down everybody and add a certain amount of stun, leaving them open for other attacks from my other teammates. I like. I just love that sort of team play in mind. So jumping off that, Andy, about like the I'm invited to the party, but I'm actually going to show up type thing, like me being the type of gamer I am, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, this game is going to be a major fucking success. Like everything about it, both the single player and the the way these war zones are playing out, all of my normal friends are going to be playing this game. Oh, yeah? Like all of them, for sure. I'm going to get to roll with James Burke. James Burke going to totally. be out there. I mean, that, that's the thing. Like, guy right after launch? All, all my boys are going to be playing this shit <laughs> where it's like they – Correct. They have the Avengers brand, and you were saying earlier, it's like it's it's good enough in terms of the campaign and in terms of creating a unique world and whatever. And these are going to be people that are coming into this game not thinking about all of the the think pieces and headlines that have been written over the sure, last. Sure, they won't year even know about them, right? About yeah, and they might start playing and be like, oh, these like they don't exactly look like the MCU characters, but they're going to be just playing and into it enough, I think that. They'll be like, I don't give a fuck. And by the time that they do start thinking about it, they'll already be in playing the game and uh, getting different costumes. And that's the other key thing. At what point are the MCU skins in the game? You know, yeah. <laughs> like I imagine that'll be this year at some point. And no like way. that's no definitely in. You don't think so? I think it'll be like a one year anniversary thing. I think they I think their whole thing is they got they want to get out and make an impact of like these are our Avengers. These are our people. This is the thing. Let's go from here and like make you understand that, especially because it's been such a conversation leading up to launch. And when I talked about this on, I think, PS I Love You or maybe a Games Daily, somebody's like, well, Spider-Man PlayStation 4 had the Spider-Man suits. I'm like, yeah, but none of us looked at Spider-Man for years leading up to Spider-Man going like, mm, he's it's not Andrew Goldfarb. You know what I mean? Like, no, we understood that this was a new Spider-Man. <laughs> no. Spider yeah, well, that was so because you had a unique suit. Exactly. Field bless, yeah. And I, and I think, yeah, I got <laughs> I think it. That, like, they, that took me a second. Yeah, it's this old <laughs> joke. Uh, it's I, I just don't think Avengers has been afforded that luxury by the community. I think the community at large says this all the time that it's not mcu and they want mcu so, I so think here's my thing like i'm are. not like the argument i have against that but not i'm not arguing against it come being a year anniversary or whatever i do think within a year we will get the mcu costumes i think it could be sooner than that because i think that these co these designs are so generic and so whatever and i think they've already proven with what they've shown us in the uh 
war table streams that yeah. like it's there's gonna be a lot of costumes there's sure. gonna be a lot of different skins and looks and i don't think that they're trying to have a, a unique identity to these avengers i think that their goal here is they're your avengers like go whatever that you whatever team whatever sure. you want your team to look like if that's mcu that's mcu if it's old school comics if you want hulk in a fucking suit cool that's that's your team and so it's, it's like i, I don't look Shirtless I Spider-Man. think the, the designs yeah, yeah. are fairly, oh fairly like on purpose. And there, that I, no, I agree decision. with you, but I think it's to motivate the microtransactions in the battle pass. Because again, totally. like anything else, the battle pass, and I know we're just playing loose with that term. It's not a subscription thing, at least that we know about, right? I don't know anything about that. Uh, it is, in fact, you can earn the in-game currency, and then you level it up, and you unlock things as you go, or everyone has the little purple icon next to it that I assume is what the in-game currency is going to be when you trade in twenty bucks and get. 500 whatever 700 crystals or whatever the hell it's going to be that's what it equates out to so i think yeah they're going to motivate you to go through and buy your suits there and then they know they can double dip and put yeah uh, whenever they want mcu out there and people will go buy it yeah because i can't really do cap suits yeah it's gonna be nice cap, cap control cool i like the way cap control. i loved cap i loved him and in, in, that's why it's so sad you only got to play him <laughs> in the opening well, he's dead he's dead Greg. yeah i'm sure they put all that time into building out a character doing all this <laughs> stuff that he's just gonna be dead that's it that's he got end. his own skill tree and everything but he's yeah, dead. exactly three skill <laughs> trees you never get to touch one compliment i will give this game uh in terms of its mindless button mashing things i liked about it it reminded me a lot of ratchet and clank playing through where it's just like i am just blasting a bunch of enemies but i'm having fun doing it and like a lot of glowy shits flying towards me and there's like i'm collecting things and like a shit ton of things so like in ratchet and clank when you have a bunch of different weapons and it's like there's a you have to get ammo individually for each of those different weapons like when you get pretty late game in those games there's a ton of shit on the floor right and i feel like with this that's just kind of it's the flip where it just starts that way and i haven't played a destiny type game before so playing this i'm like i don't know what the fuck half these things are these gears and all this shit like it to me is overwhelming where i'm like they have to want this when we when we start as kamala in the real campaign and get there they have to introduce that shit one by one i assume because i'm right there with you where i'm playing through it and it's like on top of your minor artifact, your major artifact, which is also just an ISO crystal, which is literally Ultimate Alliance 3 and what we all did. Yeah, I'm picking up the white stuff and the other stuff, and then I got my purple stuff, and then it's got green stuff, and then I got this thing that looks like a circuit board, and I'm like, what the fuck does... There's, there's does green stuff, go? and I'm like, is this green stuff the same green, like, the gamma stuff? Or no? Oh, no, 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 that's just life. Okay, but wait, is it just life for Hulk, or is that just... There's just so many, like, visual cues that, yeah, I, I'm with you, Greg. They, I think you'll be easy. They need to... Time. Do a better job, but even then, will they? I don't know, man. So far, did not. You guys are very hopeful. Like, like I don't even remember that stuff being introduced when I played Destiny Two. Granted, I jumped into Destiny Two and didn't play Destiny One. Um, but I feel like these games have a knack for like being like, figure it out. I, I I think, I think Bless is right. I think they, I think that's just sort of the angle that games uh, development is taking these days, where it's like, hey, this shit's been around for a long time. Like, I, you know, if you don't know it, you'll figure it out or somebody else will help you. I don't think it's going to have like this deep dive where Kamala has a whiteboard out telling you about all the, the <laughs> nanites and shit like this that. This is an artifact. I think it's yeah. like, yeah. like Bruce is telling her, right? Like, oh, you found these, these fucking glowing white things. You can apply those. Yeah. Your thing. I, I don't, and, and, and as far as like button mashing goes, I, I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel like really? this is a super button mashing. I felt like the when I, when I saw an enemy over there, I was going to aim and hit that dude. And if I was getting attacked, I was going to parry. And the fact that the fact that there is a game like this where and I was I shouldn't say the first game because I'm sure there have been other sort of shared shared world games like Warframe or something like that that have this built in but it it's it makes it more special to me where there's a an actual dodge button that if you timed it correctly it creates a parry move and when that's done correctly it goes into a cool little slow mo thing and you're it's like a little tiny little cutscene or whatever um but having that in a shared world game, I think, makes it feel more special and less, less like you're just running around, kind of hoping you hit animation. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. If you, if I don't know that that stuff kind of sets it apart as opposed to like, you know, I don't know, Mar- Ultimate Alliance or something. If you're just running around and hoping you run away from a certain attack, I like the I like <laughs> the idea of knowing that if I'm going to get hit by a heavy attack, I can counter this in a certain way. Counter is the word I've been looking for, not parry. Mm-hmm. I'm extremely interested in how many more Golden Gate Bridge type segments we get in this game because I wouldn't be surprised if we only get one in the middle and one at the end or something really? like that. 
I like, have to be the end, right? Because it's them assembled in the b- b- the beginning, go through, reassemble them, and then at the end, you're the game reassembled. end. The game ends and caps like you could play as me now and credits. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just it's funny because like the I the Golden Gate Bridge thing. While I did enjoy a lot more than I thought I would, like I'm kind of with Andy where it's like a lot of it just kind of or, or with with Wes, I guess a lot of it just kind of felt like we are just triggering these animations and these like quick time event type stuff. You're never with the character long enough for it to really matter. Sure. Um, the one right. part that you like the most is Black Widow. And that kind of just feels like it's over before it starts. And then you're just kind of like rushed into it all. I wonder if after you play through the game and are, are a little more used to it, where that very much is a tutorial. And it's, I think, a very bad tutorial because it's not what the gameplay style actually is. But I wonder if after we are so familiar with controls and all the different characters and all of it, if there is going to be a you know, those type of campaign levels that don't need to also function as a tutorial. Mm. Now, now, do you, pieces. now, do you mean yeah. do you mean that they would be a sort of a standalone single player experience? Like this, you know, you could play this as a single player game and it would feel like a big triple A single player campaign. I mean, like, I, I, that's what I want more than anything. I'm just saying even just a couple of those, like a couple big set piece missions that yeah. you get to play that you are switching between team members. They like t- well, they the talked tutorial. a lot. They talked. They've talked a lot about how, like, yes, you are going to have your single player missions that aren't the war table stuff and aren't the the harm stuff. And I don't know if that entails switching back and forth between characters, but I mean, at least it gives me hope that we're going to get stuff could. reminiscent of that. Well, so I, mean, I think it could because I think I think they, you know, that intro is really trying to play on the that long awesome sequence in Avengers one where you are swapping and seeing everybody do their thing and being in their element and sort of, you know, Hulk jumps this when he lands down and now Iron Man soups it and it's now it's his portion of the game. I think they do that because it, it, it sort of shows that this is a flashy, cool experience, but I don't know if it necessarily lends to the gameplay being fun when you're swapping that quickly. But see, I, I wonder, like, we got to play more of the campaign in this beta than I ever would have anticipated. Like, we got, I thought it was going to be the bridge, and then you're on to the war table. And it wasn't. Like, we got another campaign mission that was Bruce and Kamala uh, oh, yeah, that's true. going to the, the aim thing, like, go, going through uh, Hulk fighting um, Abomination. Like, to me, all that stuff, is it, that was, it was great and it was awesome. But I expect a lot more of that. I don't know if I'm expecting another bridge-type thing that's expanded that doesn't feel like a tutorial, mm-hmm. you know, like, like the uncharted kind of like, cool. Most of the big game set is piece. kind of like going yeah. through, but then you get to the big set pieces kind of the reward. Like I got to, I got to get one. I I'm so. pretty sure they're like, I, I, here's what I'm going to guess. Let's make a pizza bet right now. We get, oh. we get four more of those. Ooh, four more for a total of five. Total of five. I say we, we get, get one more. I say you get one more. I think two more middle and end. Somebody yeah. gets three. So then, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, well, mm, I can't. I can't go through. <laughs> any any final <laughs> thoughts so far on uh, Avengers, Marvel's Avengers? I'm stoked. I I'm I, glad I, you guys I, are very high on it because that actually makes me feel better. Because coming out of it, legit, I was like, I I played the Anthem beta uh, when Anthem was coming out, and I was like, I like the Anthem beta. I liked the Anthem beta better than this. Um, that said, Anthem came out a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. And so I'm maybe I'm like on the reverse side of this where I'm like, oh, I don't know when it comes out. It's actually a lot better when I get the full picture of what's going on. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm stoked. I think that they have been able to see where other games have succeeded and failed. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's again, it's you know, it's a big it's a big developer and a big publisher. And I feel like they I just trust Bill Roseman, man. I do. I I feel like he's like all right. I I I know what I know what has to be done in order for this game to be successful and to be fun and to not feel like a a quick cash grab. And when I I say quick, this game's been in development for quite a while and it's probably <laughs> taken a long ass fucking time to make. But uh, I don't know, man. I I had a lot more fun with it than I thought it would going into it. I think we were all kind of eh on it, and I came out thinking, you know what? I, this is a game that I will put a lot of hours into, just like I do with all the Destinies when they first come out. Yeah. And I'll probably stop playing it as soon as I'm done with you know the main campaign stuff and the main DLCs or whatever. But, but um, Andy, I'm still stoked. Question for you though: Like, do you think that it being Marvel can change that? Because with Destiny, it's like okay, cool. The you know Beyond the Necromancer expansion comes out, <laughs> <Crushed> exactly, <it. laughs> and you're just like, I don't give a fuck. But it's like, oh, now it's a Spider-Man expansion. Um, 
I would say no, because even when the Spider-Man DLCs came out, I wasn't like all up on them immediately. It did take me a while to eventually play the Spider-Man DLCs on PS4. And that's just the type of player I am. Like, it, uh, again, it it's not indicative of the quality of a game. Like, if Destiny comes out with straight up fucking fire DLCs and it's like the world is raving about how incredible these DLCs are, it'll probably still take me a long time to get to them, even if I, if I ever do, just because I'll probably be busy playing other shit. But question number two, though, do you think that it might change it because it's Marvel for enough people around you that that entices you because it's like, oh, well, all my friends are playing this right now? I mean, like, if Greg is like, well, I'm going to drop in into this next DLC, then I'll probably hop in with him. No joke. Hell yeah, you will. Like, my because it is, because Marvel does help it. And if I, I'm, I'm just hoping that I am able to fall in love with a character that none of y'all want to play. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our thoughts on the Avengers beta. I'm sure we'll be playing that a lot more in the, in the months to come and even the weeks to come with the with the beta when, whenever it actually gets back into our hands. Uh, but anyways, this has been the Kind of Funny Games cast. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games supporters for uh, supporting in any which way you can, but silver members and above, you get the exclusive post show that we're about to do right now. And let me tell you, it's going to be the first episode ever of Bless Who featuring Andy Cortez. Whoa. He doesn't, know he what doesn't this have is. this stuff. Andy nope. doesn't have this stuff. He does not. He doesn't have this stuff. Exciting stuff. Let's see how it goes. <laughs>